what the typical self-improvement journey looks like. Get fed up with life. Look to the internet as your savior. Start watching self-improvement YouTubers who seem to have it all figured out, but we don't. Watch endless content while fantasizing about your ideal future. Get stuck in tutorial hell. Don't take action. Watch a video about how to take action. Get discouraged. Then when you actually go to take action, you don't know what to do or how to start. Repeat. None of the knowledge you spent hours consuming planted itself into your subconscious mind because there was nowhere for it to go. It seems like most people's self-improvement journey starts off like this. Mine definitely did. I watched and listened to hundreds of hours of videos and podcasts about business, health, and self-development, but I always struggled to take action on what I was learning. I kept making the same mistakes over and over again, even though I was given the tools not to. I felt like I was learning when I was consuming, but none of it translated over into real life. But this isn't just limited to self-improvement. In any area of life, we seem to do a lot more learning than doing. And that learning phase for some of us never ends. I see a lot of people talking about how you shouldn't watch self-improvement YouTube videos because they're a waste of time. Many YouTubers who make self-improvement videos also say self-improvement is ruining your life, but then they keep making videos about self-improvement after that, but I digress. In one of the first videos on my channel, I actually talked about this issue of people not taking action. I went through this phase of watching hours of self-improvement on YouTube and I mentally masturbated over the progress I was going to make. I wanted to post YouTube videos, however, I kept putting it off and not taking action. I was over consuming content related to it, teaching me how to do it. And this is what everyone gets wrong about learning. The problem is that we aren't taught how to learn, we were taught how to gain knowledge and there's a difference. Knowledge and wisdom are not the same thing. Knowledge turns into wisdom through self-experimentation. You need to experiment with the things you are learning if you want to gain an understanding. And this letter will teach you how to do that. But Abraham, I'm not ready yet. Yes, you're not supposed to be. If you feel ready, it's because it's below your skill level. The only way to grow and learn is through failure. And failure comes when you're out of your comfort zone, or in other words, above your skill level. The most productive and progressive periods of my life were during times of stress. This is not just me though. Every technological advancement the human race has ever made was during times of struggle. We were forced time and time again into the next stages of evolution. It took us more than 60,000 years to go from the bow and arrow to the gun, but only 445 years to go from the gun to the atomic bomb. In fact, while I was researching this, I found out that the First World War marked both the end of battle horses and the beginning of weapons of mass destruction, getting closer to things like nukes. War has always been the mother of invention. Now, I'm not saying that we need to go to literal war to grow. Growth happens when your skill level is challenged, and the more that skill level is challenged, the more you will be forced to grow. If there's not enough challenge, you will be bored. If there's too much challenge, you will be overwhelmed. You keep postponing that task that you want to do because you believe you need to learn more before presenting or publishing it. This is because you feel more secure in the learning stage. You feel less secure when facing the vulnerability and criticism that comes with sharing the finished product. In reality, you wouldn't want it any other way. If it was, it wouldn't be worth doing. It wouldn't give you the same dopamine peak as something that was more exciting or challenging. Mihai Csikszentmihalyi in his book Flow wrote, playing tennis for instance is not enjoyable if the two opponents are mismatched. The less skilled player will feel anxious and the better player will feel bored. He then went on to say, Enjoyment appears at the boundary between boredom and anxiety when the challenges are just balanced with the person's capacity to act. Enjoyment here is referring to flow. When we engage in something that we enjoy that matches our skill level, we enter the flow state. The flow state is when all of your best work gets done. Hours will go by without you noticing and you feel so immersed in your task that you forget to stop. So you're probably thinking, okay, I get it. I need to struggle if I want to grow, but how do I actually learn by doing? Application is what turns knowledge into wisdom. In other words, learning is done best through doing. If you don't have something to apply your knowledge towards, your mind will, will not register it as important and then just discard it. Any good student knows that practice problems are better in the long run than flashcards. You're applying the knowledge rather than memorizing it without context. I mention Ali Abdel's book a lot, but it's because it's really good. In his book, he mentions this term called an act of mastery. Albert Bandura originally invented it. An act of mastery, the process of learning through doing. He says in the book, 
The more we do something, the greater our sense of control. We learn, we level up our skills, our confidence grows, and we empower ourselves. The bottom line is that you need a project. You learn something way quicker when you have a project to apply it towards. The project will serve as a deadline, a standard, and a general direction to head towards. The project may also raise the stakes by requiring something to be of higher quality. For me, my personal brand and writing have to be good. If not, people won't read or won't listen to me and, and I make less money. My writing has now become my project. And then that turns into the YouTube videos. When you outline or start a project, you are making an intention on that project. The intention to learn something will help you notice things that will aid in your progress. Then you will hold the end goal or the purpose of that project at the top of your mind all the time. Having it in the back of your mind all the time will help you apply these lessons and the things you hear to it. Depending on your current goals or purpose, you will get something out of this letter, this video that even I'm not getting, simply because you're highlighting certain words that stand out in relation to your goal and your specific situation. But the intention is important. If you intend to actually learn from this video and take action, then you'd be thinking of ways to apply the things that I'm saying even as you read or, or watch you'd be getting those aha moments of clarity. If you intend to procrastinate by watching this, then you will procrastinate even more and not learn anything. The main idea here is that you shouldn't just learn, learn in accordance. You need to make a conscious choice about what area you're interested in learning about. Don't worry about not knowing enough. This is good, you will learn faster this way. Then you need a medium to distribute your findings or outline a project. You can apply your knowledge in a few different ways, but by far the best way is to share your lessons online through social media. Why social media? Because you can share your journey from the ground up and pave the way for anyone who's one step behind you or even at the same level as you. Even if you don't know how to do something or haven't done it yet, you can share how you're going to do it and people will want to follow along with that journey. This path is especially true for people who enjoy self-improvement. It's also true for anyone who just likes to learn a lot of things. As you learn something, you slowly improve your skills and face greater challenges. And every time that you get to a new level of challenge, you are more than qualified to teach the people that are one step below you. If you learn something, even if you're watching this video and you can relate it to your own experiences, then you could teach it to somebody who doesn't know. This is how all knowledge is shared, all of it, because there are no such thing as original ideas. You don't have to be a guru, just be a guide, then you, in turn, memorize and learn those things better. This is what is called the protege effect. The protege effect occurs when someone puts in more effort to learn information when they know they're going to teach it to someone else. This is different from the effort they would put in if they were only learning it for themselves. The key words here are when they know. This is that intention coming into play again. When you teach people the things you've been learning or are learning, you memorize and learn better, not just while you are doing it, but while you, are, but when you are intending to teach it to other people. My self-improvement skyrocketed the moment that I started posting videos online, and it skyrocketed even more when I decided to do coaching and consulting. I would hop on a call with a client and sometimes struggle to articulate a certain topic or idea to them, or sometimes I just wouldn't know what to say. That meant that there were missing pieces in my knowledge of that subject. Then afterwards, I would either research that thing to understand it better, or I would pick up information naturally that just helped me to articulate it better the next time around. So that is another form of a project. There's a quote that Eckhart Tolle mentions in The Power of Now, the teacher and the taught together create the teaching. I will run through some action steps of what I do when I want to know more about a topic. And this is, this is actually how you learn things. And it's also part of my whole writing process. And I used it to make this, this video. So first, pick an area of interest or a concept. This can be a whole niche field or even down to one sentence. Next, brain dump everything that comes to mind about that thing. Anything that you already know or think you know. You have to do this on paper or digitally. Somewhere that will hold this information that isn't your head. Because you will forget. I recommend carrying around a pocket notebook around with you everywhere you go. You can use this as your catch-all without getting distracted by your phone. Then, set a deadline. If you give yourself a month to do something, it will take you a month to do it. But if you give yourself a week, it will get done in a week. The more time you give yourself to do something, the less urgent it seems and you will put it off. Then as it gets closer to the date, you will procrastinate. You need a deadline that isn't so far out that you become lazy, but not one that's so close that you become overwhelmed. The deadline will also serve as sort of a standard. This is especially important for perfectionists. The work never feels like it's ready. There's always something you feel that you can improve, but you have to get the first iteration out and then improve the next time around. 
every time that I release a newsletter, I immediately think of ways that I could, I could have made it better or I came across an idea that I could have included, but it doesn't matter. I didn't have that idea or that improvement by the deadline, so it just wasn't meant to be. As we talked about earlier, you learn through struggle and this will require you to get out of your comfort zone. Remaining inside your comfort zone is like locking yourself inside a self-imposed prison. Get out of your little ball of comfort and challenge your own ideas and beliefs. This is what minds of high development do. Pattern I've noticed in minds of low development. They have an opinion, but refuse to scrutinize it. Refusing to challenge your own beliefs will make you stagnant because you aren't expanding your mind by moving out of your comfort zone. And if you become stagnant, you will fall behind. Conscious consumption. You need to balance consumption and action every day if you want to learn and improve. Like I said before, if you don't have anything to apply your knowledge towards, your mind will discard the information. After you follow all the other steps I laid out for you, you need to know when you are going to consume and how much you're going to consume. Once you have your project, you should only be consuming information related to it. But if you consume way too much, you'll end up in the same cycle as before. You need to choose a source of knowledge, book, YouTuber, speaker, and have a dedicated time of day to consume it. For me, I have dedicated time every day for reading. I will dedicate at least 30 minutes all the way to one and a half hours to reading. I do this in the afternoon after all my work is done for the day. I find that if I consume before my work, I have too many ideas and I just get confused. It's better for me to consume in the afternoon, note my findings, and then come back with clarity on what I want to write in the morning. If I want to listen to a YouTube video or a podcast, I will limit that to only when I'm at the gym or when I'm driving. If I'm listening to an audiobook, I will go on a walk or sit at the park. Limiting my consumption to these times helps me to not overconsume and makes me be more conscious of what I am consuming because I have limited time to, so I will make a much better choice. The last step in learning is self-experimentation. Without imitating other people, choose what is appropriate for your own size and shape. You should have weapons that you can wield comfortably. For generals or foot soldiers, to like or dislike certain things is bad. Being adaptable and inventive is vital. On your journey, there will be many people trying to hand out prescriptions, claiming that theirs is the best. It's important to take everything you see as perspective. Find the value in it and take what works for you in your current situation or goal. Your mind will naturally do this on its own, but only if you have an open mind and you make the intention to learn something. If you want to improve, self-experiment. Prescriptions should only be used to get the ball rolling. When you self-experiment, you find gaps in a system and then fill them using your own methods and experiences. Use prescriptions as stepping stones and be inventive to find what works best for you. Evolution lies in creativity. This is what I did when I actually created my purpose planner. I used other planners, saw the gaps in those, those planners, and then filled them, filled them with my own knowledge and experiences. If you want to create your own clarity and you want to try out my planner and then self-experiment with it and then make a better one and even sell it for yourself, then go ahead. Um, check it out. First link in the description. Make sure, you <coughs> make sure you check out 14 Days to Purpose. It's a free journaling course about purpose that will help you find direction and help you on your self-improvement journey with questions you never ask yourself. So if you're not ready to buy the planner, then you can check out 14 Days to Purpose. Join our alliance. We have uh, some free stuff in there and more free stuff to come. A uh, free YouTube course is coming soon. So check that out. It's on school. It's completely free. It's in the description as well. Um, it's like-minded individuals and self-improvement. So check it out. Um, sign up to the newsletter. That's also in the description. I think that's it. That's all for today. So hope you have a great rest, great weekend and see ya.